Hey, I'm Dr. Mila Brujic, and welcome to this episode of the OI Show, where we're going to be talking to Jason B. Secker on the power of co-managing. Friends, this is Dave Keating. Before we get into the show, I wanted to thank Team for supporting the podcast. If you're not aware, Team is a virtual staffing and agency which helps connect virtual teams to your practice. I don't know about you, but I had a harder and harder time finding people to come in and join me in the in office staff. And so over the last two years, we've found 10 virtual people to become part of our team. They do things like answer the phone, they help with billing insurance, they check for documentation before it comes in, they scribe in the exam room, they can order contact lenses, and the list goes on. We've been able to work with several agencies over the years, but we have found that team has been the most effective at ensuring that our virtual employees get paid, stay on time, and that we're following up with them and making sure that they're a great agency for these people. If you are ever interested in considering a virtual employee into your office, I'd love to chat with you. But also, I wanted to let you know that Team is offering a $250 discount when you first sign up with them. Check out HireTeam.com, H-I-R-E-T-E-E-M.com for a $250 discount or see the show notes below for a link that will get you to the website. Thanks to team for supporting the OI show. And thanks to you for being a listener. Dr. Jason B. Secker, welcome to the show. Appreciate you for being here. Um, why don't you share with the audience a little bit about yourself, where you went to optometry school, where you're currently practicing, and really the passion that you have within optometry. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks, Mila, for, for having me. It's great to be here with you. Uh, I'm a big fan of, of yours and all the work that that you do in the optometric space. So yeah, thanks for having me. It's, a, it's an honor to be here. I'm uh, Jason Biesecker. I, I found, I'm the founder of Envision Specialty Eye Care and Dry Eye Center in uh, Meridian, Idaho. We're a referral-based optometry clinic that I really specialize in the treatment and management of ocular surface disease. The Really, the goal of the clinic was to address the unmet need of providing just more advanced uh, dry eye treatments to the patients in my community. I, I feel that this is probably uh, prevalent in many communities a, across the, the country. And a, another big goal was to really help inc increase collaboration and shared patient care within our uh, optometric community. I really believe we have this great opportunity to specialize and, and collaborate uh, with each other and just provide our patients with uh, the best outcomes that, that they deserve. That's great. So Jason, when did you open the practice? When did you start this specialized practice? It was in July of 2021. Well, so initially, right after the pandemic. Initially, it was supposed to be during 2020 and I kind of pumped the brakes a little bit at that time. And, and waited a little bit longer and ended up opening in uh, July of 2021. So is your practice right now 100% focused on this? Meaning, do you do contact lenses? Do you have an optical in your practice? Or are you just 100% focused on the ocular surface and dry eye care? I would say about 95%. Uh, I still do some other disease care for for patients that kind of followed me from my previous practice. So I'll do some glaucoma management, a macular degeneration management, uh, but no, no optical, no, no contacts. Uh, I do have bandage contact lenses in my clinic, but, but past that, I don't, uh, I don't really know all the new technology and in, in contacts anymore these days. I, it's not something that I keep up on. Uh, no optical, Part of the reason for that, too, is I built my clinic based around referrals from, from other doctors, and I didn't want to create a barrier uh, for a doctor referring to me, and, and I kind of saw as having an optical might, might, be a, might be a barrier to a doctor referring over to me, then they might think, hey, well, if I send them over there, then they're just going to get their glasses and contacts over there as well. Uh, so that was a, one of the big reasons. 
and I, I really just didn't want to deal with an optical either. Yeah, yeah, because it is. It's a lot to manage, too, on top of everything else as well. Yeah, exactly. So are you um, a provider for medical insurances, or are you a purely cash-based practice? I I do accept probably too many medical insurances. I think I'm credentialed with like 48 different medical insurance companies. And and again, I didn't want to have a barrier to uh, people being able to gain access to me or or for doctors referring because I felt if, you know, they refer their patient over, I don't accept their insurance, then they might be less likely to continue to refer. But I definitely uh, accept cash as well. <laughs> And then yeah, most <laughs> business owners will. Um, so Jason, when you set this whole thing up, how did you go about uh, making other practitioners aware in your community that you were doing this? I mean, did you go knocking door to door? Did you send letters? How did that process look? Yeah, a lot of a lot of boots to the ground. Yeah, a lot of just going to uh, practices. Uh, I would just show up, you know, a, a lot of times you hear, you know, contact them ahead of time, let them know that you're coming. I, I would just show up at their clinic, uh, wait to have just a moment of their time. I create a, a little packet that highlighted, you know, all the services that, that I provide that, you know, are not being provided by anybody else in, in the Valley and, and just kind of highlight how these services could help their dry eye patients and even help relieve some strain on their practice. Because sometimes, you know, the, these dry eye patients, when you don't have a lot of options for them, they just keep showing up and they're just, uh, you know, eating up a lot of chair time uh, as well. So highlighting how, you know, my services could also help their practice as well. And I did do mailers and, and open open houses. And uh, I, was, uh, I was a little bit lucky as, as well because the previous practice that I was at was a referral-based cataract and LASIK center. And so a lot of the doctors in the community already knew who I was based on letters that I had sent back to them. I had held continuing education events um, as well. So I was already kind of known in the community. I, I was a regional director for our state association for years as well. And I think that kind of helped uh, get things going a little bit quicker was just being more well-known uh, in the community as well. So Jason, you bring up an interesting point because when I hear you communicating about this, it sounds a lot like that um, optometry cataract surgeon relationship where yeah. they're sent for surgery and then they come back after the surgery. And is that kind of the relationship that you have with um, all of the referring doctors, whether they be ODs or MDs? And a, a second question on that is, are you sending up follow-up letters on how they're doing with the treatments and everything else? Yeah, it's definitely set up like a, you know, cataract or LASIK referral center. And that's kind of what I model it after I saw what the, the cataract and LASIK surgeons were doing. And I felt that that might be a good option and way to treat dry eye. I know when I talk to a lot of a lot of doctors, a lot of optometrists and ophthalmologists, they they don't like dry eye. They don't like treating treating and managing dry eye. Um, and so I felt like this was a way that they could send the patients to me to manage the dry eye issues. And then I send the patients back to them for you know any other care that they might need, any primary care, glasses, contacts, or, or other services they might be getting with the other doctors. And yeah, I think referral letters back to the doctors are, are very important. I highlight what I'm doing for the patients, you know, what I think is going on with the patient. Because as we know, dry eye is a multifactorial disease. And, and to me, a lot of the times dry eye is a, a misnomer. Uh, you know, we're, we're usually talking about meibomian gland dysfunction or anterior blepharitis or superior limbic keratoconjunctivitis or neurotropic keratitis, you know, all these different conditions that all just have the same symptoms. And so I'll let them know what I feel that their patient has, what what I'm going to be doing for them. And uh, I think that's very, very helpful. And a lot of the doctors, I, I think, do appreciate that a lot. That's great, Jason. So um, how long were you in clinical practice 
so so first, where did you go to optometry school? And then how long were you in clinical practice before you said, I'm starting this. I see a need for this. I have a passion for this. And I want to go both feet in the pool on this one. So, so I went to optometry school at uh, Indiana University School of Optometry there in, in Bloomington, a beautiful campus, by the way. If, if you've yeah. never been there, it's a, it's a great place it's to visit. Gorgeous. And I graduated in 2012. And so I opened my clinic in, you know, 2021. So, so almost 10 years out. And that was kind of by design as well. I wanted to make sure I had clinical knowledge down pat before I had to worry about how to run a business. And yeah. I didn't want to, I, you know, I really look up to the people who do that right out of school. I don't know how they're they're doing it all. Um, but yeah, I wanted to get a lot of clinical knowledge first and then and then open up my clinic, uh, you know, afterwards. So almost 10 years after school is when I when I started my clinic. That's great, Jason. So we're now in 2024 and every everything is becoming hyper specialized in, in eye care. We have specialty lenses, we have yeah. dry eye and all the facets of what that looks like. Jay, just to give you perspective, I graduated in 2002. In 2003 was when Cyclosporum 0.05% came. That's when it came out. So when I graduated, we didn't have anything prescription and our treatment for my bone gland dysfunction, if we even labeled it, because we didn't really have a diagnosis code for it, if we, if we identified it, we treated it with a rice in hopefully what was a clean sock in a microwave. <laughs> I mean, that, that's that's where we're coming from. So, so yeah. the, the advancement has just been amazing. But that's just an ocular the ocular surface space, and just like everything, the more we understand about it, the more we realize there's nuances and there's gaps in care. We learn about things like neurotrophic and neuropathic. We learn about things like evaporative versus aqueous deficient, and the fact that they're they're not isolated events. But this is just ocular surface. Think mm -hmm. about all the other facets of optometry. I, I want you to put on your futuristic hat. And we're now 10 years into the future. So it's 2024 20, today. We're 2034. Tell me what optometry looks like in 2034 with all of this. Are we going to see more areas where specialization is occurring and people are devoting as you close to 100% of your time to certain aspects of eye care? Are we gonna start seeing this being as multiple things found under one roof? What do you what do you envision or view as the future of eye care? I I really think you know specialization is is going to be a big part of it. Because as you were mentioning, you know, there's been so many advancements even in the last several years in, in various areas of eye care, not just ocular surface, you know, you were talking about specialty contact lenses, myopia control, vision therapy, all these new medications for, uh, and injections for macular degeneration and, and the ins and outs of those. And when do you prescribe? When do you make that referral? And I think as a single practitioner, it's virtually impossible to keep up with with all of all of these new advancements and in, in treatment options. So I think that's gonna beg the need for more and more specialists to just dive into these areas and, and specialize in a in a condition or a subset of conditions or or an area of the eye, much like our ophthalmology colleagues do. You know, we don't see cataract surgeons going in and doing epiretinal membrane peels and and vice versa, um, you know, they, they've chosen an area to become hyper-specialized. And I think that just ends up providing better care, better outcomes for patients, just better solutions for patients. And I still think that there's gonna be a great need as always for primary care as well. And I think just specialists working with primary care, specialists working with specialists, all together, we can just create a, a landscape where our patients can get the best possible care and the best possible outcomes, which I believe that's what we really all want for our patients too, is just to provide them with the best outcomes, the best quality of life that, that our patients can have. 
Jason, this was awesome. You have truly brought a unique perspective here, and it's going to be great to see again how much of this really comes to fruition as we continue to proceed to proceed through all this. Because again, the 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 rate of change is so quick. So, Jason, I want to I want to give you a huge shout out and thank you for being on uh, this episode with us. Oh, thank you, Mila. It's such a pleasure to be here. It's always great talking with you. Uh, we'll definitely have to get together at, at some of the up and coming meetings. It's always good uh, hanging out. Just just don't keep me out too late playing poker, man. <laughs> I can't I can't make that guarantee, but I can guarantee you that we will uh, definitely see each other. <laughs> and thank you all for joining us for this episode of The Power of Co-Managing on the Optometric Insights Show. Thanks again, friends, for joining us for this episode. Again, thanks to team for their support of this episode. If you're considering or have ever considered getting a virtual team member for your practice, check out HireTeam.com. That's H-I-R-E-T-E-E-M.com. Mention the OI show when signing up or hit the link below for a $250 discount off of your first month's team member. Thank you.